square. Hang on a minute because I think we're switching over. Okay, there we go. So, you know, naturally you get the same, you get the, the little boat and um, just a few of the little bags and uh, the little teeny wax and drill pin. You know, nothing spectacular with these little Amazon kits. Um, so naturally I have one for the fairy and one for the leopard. Um, so here's the drills, guys. And this is where I was a little floored. Because by looking at even the key here, the key does not show me. The key does not show me any green there at all. It's all blues, black, and gray, right? Is that what you see? Um, but here's the kicker, guys. We have green. We have like a... Oh, wrong side. Sorry, guys. New at this. We have a green. We have another shade of green. Then we have the grayers and there's the um this one is more of cl closer to white than that last one on the other kit this one is much closer to a b52 it's not quite there it might be a 36 66 i'm not sure there's a like a lavender and then one shade off so this one would be your uh light and this would be your medium and then, um, this almost looks like a navy blue to me. And then you got the light blue. And then over in this one, you've got the uh, medium gray. Then you have two 310s. And they look, from looking at them, they look excellent. I see nothing. I mean, I don't see no oils on them or nothing. Um, and then you have the light gray. And a medium. That's like a blue. Another blue, guys. And then your medium. Uh, another type of medium gray there. So, that's the one I'm going to kit up and start tonight. So, when I told you... <laughs> Today in the chat, that I'm a cat lover too. I'm a cat lover. I mean, can you tell? My pajamas even have cats on them. Okay. Um. So he, here's another another thing. Um. So I was at a Walmart and I see you guys with all these like. And so I stopped and picked up some of the Avery, the Avery um stickers. So I won't have to use printer paper. So I did pick up one pack of those for now to get to get started with. Um, but here's the deal, guys. I was going through my husband. I got my husband like three Christmases ago. I got him a, a toolbox on wheels. Um, but my husband is too ill to work on cars anymore. So he doesn't really mess with these tools hardly ever. And so he's never, ever used it. I still do work on the car. I, I change my own oil, I fix my own, you know, if I get a flat, I do my own flat tires. I um, just got done putting in um, temperature sensors and um, um, there was another sensor. Um, and I just replaced the sensors. I, I can do a lot of car work myself. Um... I just don't want to have to tear the motor out. I can. My husband has taught me how to do motors, how to take them apart, and how to put them back together. I just choose. I don't want to go that far into cars, really. I mean, I don't want to be that much into them. I'm too girly for that. I just, I'll, I'll do it to save money. Um, I can change my own alternator. I can change my own battery. I can, you know, I can deal with the radiator leak, uh, radiator hoses, that kind of thing, uh, spark plugs. Um, I can do all that. I just don't want to get into oil pan gaskets and uh, I do not want to get into transmission gaskets and I do not want to get into anything to do with tearing the motor put that far down. No siree. 
But here's the thing. I was going through that toolbox, and down inside that toolbox were these two little boxes, guys. And so I opened them up, and they have these little dividers. They're plastic dividers. Guys, look how lucky I got. I didn't even know that, I, that he even had them. And I didn't know that they were in that toolbox. But, yeah. So, it's got these dividers. I mean, they come apart. So, you can, you can, you can decide how big you want your slot to be. It's so cool. So I'm so excited about it, and it's not a lot, but it adds to what I have. See, I only had 28 here, and well, if I have 35 colors, it ain't going to fit in that one box. So, so now I have this, and I could decide how big I want my slots to be. See, I can decide if I want to put a marker in at that point or not. So I can have up to one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven slots, guys. There's eleven slots in here. So, um, and there's two of these. How lucky did I get? Ah, I struck gold. So for my next project, I'm going to be using these. Yep. I'm going to be using these. <laughs> So I'm so excited about that. Um, so cool. And I just now noticed this, but the lid is marked out for centimeters on this side. So it's ruler. Centimeters here, inches here. How cool is that? Oh, that is so cool. I never even noticed that till now. So this is cool. I right, So I've got uh, 11. So that's Another 22 slots that I have for beads, guys. And these markers go clear up and touch the lid. So I can't see them um, spilling over into the other slots at all. I'll let you know how that works. But I'm pretty sure what I normally do on something like this is I'll, put a, I'll fold up a piece of paper towel and put it on the top to help make a seal. So I'm probably going to wind up doing that. But... Yeah, and then I'll just mark them on the top above the slots. I'll just mark what slot is what. Or I'll, I could even I could even probably just put the stickers in the back back here along the wall of each slot. Um, you know, I might do both. I might put them on the top as well as in the inside. That way, if the lid is open and I can't see what's on the top. You know what I'll do? I'll put them on the... I'll put them on this side of the lid. That way, while I got open, they'll be here in order, in the order that the slots are. That's what I'll do. But anyway, excited about that find. Didn't cost me a penny. <laughs> so, never thought that I had them. I did not know I had them, so I'm excited. Um. So that's my ideas there. But you guys, if I decide that I want to make my own channel, this is what I want to do. I want to keep my channel a little bit different from everyone else. Um, I want to possibly, um, because I've been cross-stitching since I was 10 years old. Um, when I was 10 years old is when I learned to cross-stitch and um, crochet and knit. Um, and we lived in Denver, Colorado, and I was bused many miles to school. And in the mornings, we would get to school so darn early that um, normally they'd take us to the auditorium, watch videos, cartoons, that kind of thing. And a lot of us girls got bored with that, didn't want to do that. So we had talked to a couple of the teachers about is there something else that we could do besides watch videos and cartoons? And um, they came up with the idea of te get, get, getting us girls together and teaching us how to... The first one they taught us was how to crochet. And um, so the first semester, 
the first quarter, the first quarter, we did um, crochet. And she taught us how to do like headbands, hair bows, um, bracelets, um, belts, um, simple little things, um, little brooches, that kind of thing. And, and so that's what we, we, we did. Um, we would, we would, we would have to be up by 5 a.m. We would have to be on, um, at the bus stop at 6 a.m. We were bused, you know, 30, 40 miles away from home to go to a school because, um, what they were trying to do was uh, equalize the segregation, um, equalize, equalize the school, you know, black according to white. And um, so they shipped us 30 miles to downtown Denver. I, I lived in Denver at the time. And I lived in a little tiny suburb called Montbello. And... Um, so they we would they would pick us up and they would drive us all the way into downtown Denver to go to school. Um, well, it's more like um, almost well just outside of downtown, almost into Lakewood. Um, and and I went to a, a Stedman Elementary School um, in Denver. Um, so we would get there, um, board the bus. Drive the, 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 the 50, the 40, uh, 30 to 35 to 40 miles to school and still have time left over. And I think the reason they did that was in case the bus was to break down. We had a lot of breakdowns and their buses were not in very good shape. And, um, I think they did that for breakdowns so that we would not miss too much school. Um, I don't remember maybe only being late to school once or twice out of all the breakdowns that I've been through in the, in the school buses. Um, but we would get to school by eight o'clock. School didn't start till nine. Um, so we had that whole hour to sit there and do nothing pretty much. And so, yeah, so she taught us how to crochet. Then in the second quarter, she asked us if we'd like to learn to knit. So she she brought us knitting needles and yarn and she sat there and taught us how to knit. So then we knitted headbands, like I said, headbands, bows, um, bracelets, um, you know, to get us used to doing the um, um, cast-ons. She would have us do a cast-on and then turn it into a necklace. That kind of thing, and and it, she made it fun, and 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 so so that's how I learned to, to knit, and then in the next quarter, um, she'd switch it up to cross stitch, and she would have us bring five dollars to um, go home and talk to our parents about bringing five dollars to help her buy supplies for us to cross stitch, and so we did that, and she would you know came back with the floss, and she came back with, and we got to keep what she bought for us. We got to keep the the floss. We got to keep our material. She 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 buy us a nice size piece of material, but our projects would only be, you know, little teeny things like this. Um bunnies, um little deers, um like little animals. And uh projects that for a kid would probably take a long time, but for an adult would take maybe 10 minutes to do, <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind of thing. But, um, yeah, so that's how I learned to, to cross stitch. Well, I've been cross stitching every since. I've never put it down from that point on. So from the age of 10, I am now 58. Okay. So I have been doing cross stitch for what? 40 years. You know, 40 plus years, guys, I've been cross-stitching. So, um, it got, it's got to be the, the stuff that you get in the, in the magazines. And, um, I've got cross-stitch magazines up my wazoo around here, um, that I've collected over the years, um, all in excellent shape. Um, the projects just became, I mean... 
too easy for me to do. I just don't like anything that's too easy. And um, so I went and, and, and back in 1998 when I got my first computer, I got a pattern maker for cross stitch. That's the name of it, pattern maker for cross stitch. I bought that pattern maker for cross stitch back in 1998. Okay, I have been doing my own cross stitch patterns since 1998. Okay, um, I do pictures of the kid you know of the kids i find stuff online that's um copyright free i find uh draw a blank uh just photos of my grandbabies um you know, uh, trips that we've gone on, like the Black Hills, that kind of thing. Put them in the damn cross stitch maker and, and voila, I've got my own chart, you know. And I like to make them big so that they have a lot of detail in them. So when I mean big, and I'll show you what I mean by big here in a minute. So when I found out that Diamond Art works on the same principle, you know, they're they, they, you know, you guys have said that there's a formula, a, a, for, a, a formula for coming up with the dimensions on the squares. Well, what was it, like a 0.25 or something like that. I don't go through the dimensions. My pattern maker doesn't go that way. But I also read that it equals to a size 10 Ada. So... My pattern maker has that setting in it. So I just go through and I just set my pattern maker on 10 Ada. And it makes my charts up for 10 Ada. And um, then I go in and I just tell it the size. Now, it, it's because of how old it is, it does not have centimeters. It just has millimeters and it has inches. So I set it for inches. Because I don't know what the what it is in millimeter. And until I get extra ink or whatever, I'm not going to mess with trying to figure it out. So I just left it in inches. Besides that, here in the United States, it's hard to find um, frames that fit centimeters because we go by inches. So I just decided I'm going to keep my patterns inches and not centimeters. So when you see my patterns, I will be telling you what they are. But I will be telling you what they are in inches, not in centimeters I mean I can figure out I can download a, a thing in there that tells me converter and in, you know inches to centimeters but um I yeah I'm just gonna do them in inches so um here's the deal I'm trying to figure out how to make my own cross stitch kit my own cross stitch kits okay so here's what I came up with now bear with me this is just kind of a prototype um it is not anything that's set in in um stone yet um but I'm trying to figure out what how can I make my own canvases how can I there's got to be a way of making your own canvases without having to buy their their high dollar canvases that they they make the the diamond paintings on right am i right there's got to be something out there that can be done to make homemade i mean shoot we could figure it out for everything else we could figure it out for the, for diamond painting too so i'm going to be the guinea pig in this community <laughs> i'm going to be the community guinea pig <laughs> so what i'm going to do is and i know i know stitch Teresa. Stitch Teresa, she um, has done this. I know Don Donny um, Donny has done this too. Um, I also know uh, Natalia has done this. Um, tells you how to, how to make your own own kits. But I'm trying to go another step further here. So what I come up with is I went out and I bought. Five yards, five yards of um, interfacing. So this is interfacing. This is what you use 
when you're sewing uh, to stiffen collars or in the bands of shirts, if, the, if you've got the band that goes around here, um, or like down the front here for a button area, to stiffen that area up, you use interfacing. And interfacing comes in different thicknesses. I found this one, which is not the thickest. It's kind of a medium weight, I think. Let's see, is this a medium? I mean, this can also be used in, like, in crafting. It'll be uh, for for the bill of hat. Um, you know, making, um, I don't know, different things. Um, it's not telling me what weight it is. I, it feels to me to be a medium. I'm thinking it, it feels to me to be a medium, but it is... It's, it's thick. I mean, it is thick. And I got the one that has the glue on it. So you see where I'm going with this? You see? So if you look at it, you can see my hand through it, right? Hello? So if I was to take a chart... See, this was my cross stitch chart. Glue it face side up on top of the glue. So the glue side is the shiny side. It's like this. Glue the bottom of your chart to the glue like this. Okay. Um. You could still see through. Okay? But yet it's it's kind of stiff. It's stiff. I could have gone stiffer, thicker, but I was worried about whether or not I would be able to see the 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 light through the pattern. So I went with medium. I bought five yards of this stuff. This is what I have left over after the two projects that I've already, like, played around with on it. Okay? So, I found this cat pattern that my daughter had her eye on. Um. And. So, I put it in. Uh, I, I copied it into my photos. Into the JPEG. Into the pictures. And made it a JPEG jpeg picture and then i took it from the pictures sent it to my copy maker okay so i imported it into the copy maker and i made a chart from it okay now like i said this is a kitty cat but here's the deal i went and i bought the aileen's regular tack glue and as you can see, it did not, it only stuck for like, I made this probably two weeks ago. I made this about two weeks ago and it's already come apart. So I went out and now I'm going to try this. And it's called... Tight bond, quick and thick multi-surface glue, precise control, no run, two times faster, three times thicker, interior projects, dries clear, paintable, workshopable, home and crafts, water cleanup. So I'm going to try this this time, says it dries clear, so I'm going to try this this next time, I'm going to paint it on my surface here. So here's my chart that I printed out. And as you can see, you can kind of tell it's a kitty cat. You can kind of see the ears here. And then this is the line on the side of his cheek here. And this, you can see the corner of his eyeball here. Okay, it's a kitty cat. 
with butterflies. Okay. So, so what I did was I took my chart and I put it down on the shiny side of the glue of the, um, material okay and then I took and I laid a towel over the back side here I laid laid a towel over it and then I uh, I did still use the steam setting but I let it go through the towel and I ironed it because you have to use a steam setting for the glue to adhere so this chart is not coming off this material without tearing this material all up or the chart all up. If the chart stuck good, I'm not having a problem problem at all with the chart sticking to the to the um, material. Okay. Where my problem is is coming up with the idea for the glue. Now I was gonna get the and I, and I'm going to I'm going to order the big roll of glue that. The canvases normally come with um, for I think it's 33 bucks on Amazon um, I think it was like a, a um, Epsi site that I saw it was the cheapest um, but in any case I am going to order that I am also going to order two different types of canvas I'm going to order a painter's canvas and I'm going to order a, um, a, a screen canvas, a painting, a painter's uh, screen canvas. I'm going to try a screen canvas because the, the screen canvas is fairly cheap. And I think that it's thin enough that the light will still come through. So um, I, I got those in my, in my cart. I'm just waiting for the first of the month to get here and, and I'm going to order them. I also am going to get the Aileen's uh, Tacket um, glue. Um, but for now, I'm just kind of playing around. So, I got a wild hair and decided I was going to go out and buy a roll of this here contact paper. A liner paper. And I bought it in a crystal clear. So what I did was I took the smooth side... And I tried to glue the smooth side down on my chart. I left the side that has the paper, the sticky side, face up for the drill fill. Do you see what I'm saying here? Okay. So that's what I went and I did. Well, I glued this down, but as you can see, two weeks later, it's starting to peel off by itself. So I'm going to use that glue because I went out and bought that glue. And I'm going to try that glue once before I go and order the Aileen's uh, uh, Tacket over and over glue. But here's the deal, guys. You see this? See how sticky that is? Aha! And I only had to use too wide so this whole half of this chart that's a good size chart guys too wide very very tacky now I did try some drills on this tonight and the drills you cannot slide them so it's on the same principle as double sided tape um, where you can't you can't slide and um, my daughter will be doing this one um, as an experiment for me so um, I need to make sure she understands you can't slide the drills on here so she will need uh, I will give her a pair of my tweezers um, I will give her a boat set and uh, a couple of a couple of pieces of wax and um but this is very detailed guys this has um this has a lot of color in it um hang on a minute i'm gonna 
do it this way it means it's already come on all undone um this one has Oh my gosh, this has 130 colors, guys. <laughs> so she's going to be busy. And this will be her first one. This will be her first chart she's she, uh, diamond painting she's ever done. And she insisted she wanted squares. <laughs> so and did, I, did I make it challenging for her or what? But um, she loved this picture. And she's the one who picked it, so. But it's got a hundred, almost a hundred, uh, what did I say? 130, 130 colors, guys. Um, so, so yeah, so I made one hers that way. Okay. So then I got to thinking, well, shoot, I want one that's very challenging myself. So I went out. And I made myself, and I, one, mine only has 104. <laughs> mine only has 104. Hers has 130 colors in it. Um, they're, they're bright, beautiful, big, bright colors, though. She should be pretty happy with it. But mine, guys, is, okay, her kitty just passed on. Um, she had to put her kitty down. Um... She raised this kitty from a kitten, and uh, he he started having lots of issues with being able to go to the bathroom and stuff. And um, they just said they did. He got so sick towards the end that they they said they just didn't think he would be able to survive it. Um, so they told her the best thing she could do was to put put him down. Now the picture that I'm going to show you here. My printer ink started wearing out, so it's not a clear picture. It's not the best picture quality. Um.